It all began with a 25 cent ride up the mountain. By donkey, mule, or horseback, depending on which story you believe. Well, Dr. Lucius Morse was from St. Louis, and he came to this area actually because he had tuberculosis and he was looking for a better climate. And so uh, when he rode down, he used to ride down on horseback down into Hickory Nut Gorge. And he saw the monolith known as Chimney Rock and thought, wow, this is an incredible place for a tourist attraction. And so that really was the beginning of his dream. All of that happened back around 1902. But there's a whole lot of Dr. Morse's dream that happened between 1902 and today, including participation by two older brothers in his dream, twin brothers, who quickly became as smitten as Dr. Morse by Chimney Rock and its possibilities. Dr. Lucius, he was the one that had the vision. Hiram and Asel were the ones that helped to bankroll the operation. When the Morse brothers bought the original 64 acres of Chimney Rock Mountain from Jerome Freeman, their first challenge was how to get visitors safely up the mountain, beginning with an access road. You can just imagine what it's like to build a road on the side of a mountain. They got about two miles up the road and many of the engineers were telling them to stop at that point because they encountered so much rock that it made it very difficult to get past. They ended up buying some property on top of the mountain to get some water to power their steam drills and blasted on through the rock and got the last mile completed. Building the road also meant bridging the Rocky Broad River, which they accomplished by June of 1916. A few weeks later, on the 4th of July, Mother Nature whipped up a pretty good storm and an ambitious flood that undid all their good work by washing the new bridge away. That probably would have put a lot of people like, that's enough for me. But it didn't daunt their spirits and they went right back at it and built the road. And that was really the beginning of the real access. And people came from all around in their horse-drawn carriages and their Model Ts and parked at the chimney's base where you could relax at the inn that backed up against the cliffside at that time. But getting to the base of the chimney was just the first part of your journey you still had some climbing to do. The 470 steps they built to the top was quite an improvement over what earlier visitors had to negotiate. They had some pretty rudimentary stairs and things, and we hear that people shimmied up locust posts to get up on top of the chimney. I think when there's a will, there's a way, and that's pretty much the access that they had. Another part of the doctor's ambitious dream was to change the view from his mountain which he actually made happen in the 1920s by creating Lake Lure. But the long-term goal of a first-class resort to encompass Chimney Rock Park was derailed by Depression-era economics. And about the same time, ambitious plans were hatched to improve access to the mountain even more in a novel and dramatic fashion. This was a dream of Hiram Morse. He wanted everyone to have access to the mountain. And so they looked at all kinds of ways. They looked at funiculars, but the elevator seemed to make the most sense. Um, they had plans for that and talked about that early on in the century, but it wasn't until 1948 that they actually accomplished that goal. An elevator? Up the side of a mountain? No, inside the mountain. They did some engineering studies, and unfortunately, those studies happened around the time that Dr. Morris passed away. So I think he was probably involved with the idea of the elevator, but didn't get to see it to its completion. And they began construction, I guess, back in 1947. And it took about 18 months and eight tons of dynamite. Blasting into the rock and then straight up was a pretty incredible thing, given the fact that the hoistway is a 258-foot uh, shaft uh, straight up into the mountain. It was the tallest elevator in the state of North Carolina when it was constructed and then opened to the public in 1949. And um, some people asked me, why don't you have another one? <laughs> Today's visitors are reminded what a feat of engineering this was by displays posted along the 198-foot tunnel walkway. 
So glad y'all come to see us and y'all enjoy. The trip to the top takes about 30 seconds. And once you arrive, you can enjoy the 75 mile view. Visit the Opera Box, long a favorite spot. Or climb the remaining 44 stairs to look out from the chimney top's 1965 foot elevation. Other scenic attractions? The Devil's Head Outcropping. Or you can try squeezing your way through Narrow Needle's Eye. There they are, right? <laughs> or perhaps even hike to Hickory Nut Falls. At 404 feet, it's one of our state's highest and was part of a well-known scene from the feature film, The Last of the Mohicans. Of course, the main attraction remains the magnificent view of Hickory Nut Gorge and Lake Lure from the chimney. Resisting the pressure of commercial development, and after much thought and soul searching, the Morse family decided in 2007 to sell the 996 acre park to the state of North Carolina. The result is a much larger park, more like Lucius Morse envisioned all those years ago. For a long time there were ideas and plans as part of the New Parks for a New Century initiative to develop the Hickory Nut Gorge State Park. And lands had already been acquired, and the General Assembly had already authorized the development of a Hickory Nut Gorge State Park. The lands were adjacent, and it made sense to make a contiguous park and include the Chimney Rock Park. And so this is very new, and we're all learning as, as we go every day. I'm tickled to death to be here. The thing that probably was most concerning to folks in the community was that it continued to be a park, that it would continue to um, bring guests to our area because our entire area is totally dependent on tourism. And of course our associates that we work with, or me included, we're very concerned about what happens to us if it becomes a state park. And I think the Morse family's concern too is not just about their property and making sure that it was preserved and shared but also that the community and the associates and their family found the best solution. We were so delighted that the state of North Carolina, the state parks, recognized that. And it certainly was a win for our employees and I believe the community because the people that had been working here over all these years were able to continue to do what they do best and what they love to do. And I hope the people of North Carolina will be satisfied because the people that love Chimney Rock will be able to experience it much the same way as they have in years past for many generations to come, I think, as a result of this agreement.